I, I'll introduce myself again, my background and uh, my publish, my books that I've published and uh, my course offerings. These are uh, books that I've written in the past few years, and this is my most recent one on quiet, quiet woodworking. And uh, this talks mostly about the, uh, the transition of hand tools and the advantages of uh, hand tool woodworking compared to uh, full-on machinery and power tools. Of course, there is a intermediate hybrid stage. And this is my journey from my former high tech career of 30 years to my uh, woodworking furniture making career of 30 years. Now, if you add that up, it doesn't make sense. I must be about 90 years old or something, but it is a little just put considerable overlap. I, I did work, uh, woodworking part time for a number of years and then only in the last 14 years that have 13 years that I've been doing it full time. This is a starting a woodworking business book. It's pretty good. It's been revised, by the way. And this is uh, when I delved into uh, wood art. This is a uh, wood artist. It's all about um, moving away from uh, furniture and more into organic uh, sculptural work and uh, and inlay and uh, working with micro photography on uh, on dyed woods. It's a very interesting book, actually. And this is a, a whole book on uh, on a progression of uh, of a design. To a piece of furniture so this covers uh very good photography on uh, all the steps and techniques i use from my design stage the formative stage and then uh what i what i the criteria i use to design furniture right through to the making of the furniture so these books are available at my uh, woodskills.com website so these are available along with uh I have several woodworking courses from a basic woodworking course right through to furniture design course and right through to a, a design and making course that, it, that you actually get the book with the, uh, with the course and something on Kamiko. Yesterday we left off with this rough board and it's uh, so I've dressed one side and I've made it flat because this is actually the reference surface and this is a uh, steam idea. This is a rough side. The, uh, the concept is to uh, dress one side create a reference surface, a flat reference surface, and use this as a basis to, to address the uh, secondary side or the thickness of the board, bring it down to the thickness uh, you desire. Now, you could do this uh, with machines, of course, and this, uh, I tend to use machines more often than not for this stage, but if you, uh, you're intent on, use, on uh, using uh, hand tools, I described the process yesterday uh, using a scrub plane for preliminary cleaning of the wood, removing all the, uh, the rough part, and then using a jointer plane. I used a wood-based jointer plane. This uh, plane I was using yesterday, I forgot to mention, is uh, this is a plane I, I uh, at one point in my furniture, in my woodworking career, I decided to create wooden planes. So this 20, 2002, 2003, I started marketing some wooden planes. And this is, uh, these are a few leftovers that I've kept just for nostalgic reasons, but this is a wood body jointer from uh, from about 2002, 2003, so it's almost uh, about 20 years old. And this is a, a wood body smoother with my own design that I uh, designed and uh, with white metal tool works back back in the day. And I stopped doing that because I uh, I progressed onto furniture making. I attended a local school, Rosewood Studio, based in Elmont at the time, and I went through several, several weeks of, uh, of training with visiting instructors on furniture making. And that's, that's what I've gravitated towards furniture making since. So back to this board. Yesterday I mentioned that you need a, a long straight edge, longer than the board preferably, to, uh, to determine if the board is flat. This is, uh, I'm using a, an aluminum level, which is fine. I mean, you could use, I have, I have a real, uh, straight edges that are dedicated straight edges, but the aluminum level is fine. I mean, straight, relatively straight. So this is, uh, this board's doing really well. And I can, I, I, I remove some high spots at the ends and I had to work around this knotted area in the middle. So it works that way. It's fairly flat. And then uh, across the board, you need to also uh, measure across the board. And this is, uh, it's kind of flat. Now, if you notice the, uh, the board rocks, and that's because the opposite side, the opposite face is, hasn't been touched at all. And there's a convex, it's actually convex. And this side is almost okay, just a little bit of rocking. I need to remove a high point. So let's assume this is a good reference surface, and this is a grain orientation. 
what we can do is, uh, and I'll show you, we'll lock this in. Now these are, uh, I wanted to uh, talk about the work holding that I've developed. This is a work holding system I've developed. And this is, so this plugs into a workbench with the uh, dog hole uh, that's customized to my particular workbenches. So it plugs in, and locks in, and this actually keeps it, this portion keeps it from rotating. And this is the dog hole that locks in. And I've also in installed a, uh, attached a, uh, a leather face for better grip. So that's that. Then at the opposite end, I have uh, something similar, but without the dog, without the, uh, with the dog part. So this slides along the face vise, and uh, this serves as the uh, tail vise. It actually works quite well with the addition of the uh, with the leather cowhide. And it's this considerable grip, and I'll show you. Well, I was using it yesterday in the earlier session, so. But uh, last night I uh, I added this cowhide to this one for more increased the friction. So I'll, I'll lock this in here. Lock it in the face vise. Now, I need to mention the face vise is on the left on this workbench, as is uh, on most workbenches, and I'm left-handed. So this works for me really well. Now, if you're right-handed, you'll have to set up something on the opposite side, and I have some uh, some tail vices. I would also design some uh, tail vices that work in conjunction with an end vise. So he's moving back and forth, and this serves as a tail vise. And I offer plans for that at my wood skill site. So this works for better for right-handed people because you're using your right hand, of course, too. Now, in my case, uh, works, this system works really well to left-handed, but if you're ambidextrous or, uh, or if, you, uh, if you can use your, uh, your left hand for hand planing, you're, you're fine. So back to this. Using this long straight edge, which is actually just a level, you can see the, the rocking, the, the huge amount of rocking back and forth. So I would say the, uh, the rocking is, uh, so I need to, if I, if I want this board at this thickness, if I'm actually bringing it down to a, a different thickness, then it doesn't really matter. I need to remove this whole surface. But if I, if I want to just uh, flatten this surface and have it coplanar parallel to the, uh, the reference surface, then we need to remove this high spot and I'll, sh I'll go and do that. Uh, different ways of doing this. I marked off the area here. Now, what I'll do is I'll go back to my uh, my scrub plane, and uh, so I've locked this in. It's kind of tight, so. so what I'm doing is actually removing. Within those lines that I, within the lines that I marked. Again, I use uh, with the scrub plane that I, I talked about yesterday. I use a uh, diagonal stroke. Works really well. That's the kind of stroke you want on when you're doing this type of work. So let's see if I'm. A little more. You can see the work holding works really well. Like the, the probably the most difficult uh, type of planing you can do is actually diagonal planing. Because it's, it involves, it causes the board to twist and rotate, and it's hard to keep straight. So you can see it's already flat. So that's uh, that's how it's done. I mean, that's preliminary. But this middle portion, the uh, convex portion, has been removed, lowered, and now it's uh, relatively flat. And I'll just do a little bit of jointing here because I did this yesterday, wood body. So I'm not going to use the Scrub plane. Again, I'll put that away. Just too many hand planes here. <laughs> so you get the idea then. Once you've done that, it's just a matter of. So 
traveling along the surface of the board with a, with a long sole plane. I have a metal body number seven uh, joint there. It's sort of be longer than this, but this is fine. I, like, I tend to uh, prefer wood body planes. They just like better. I'll switch it up. I'll, uh, I'll use the uh, metal body one just to show you. So I'm not sure if I've set this correctly. Yeah, that's it. Now this, uh, the advantage of this uh, this plane is because the sole's longer. It rides it rides over the uh, the hollows and the, and the bumps, so it cleans that up a little bit better. It's important to have a long sole for that reason. A short sole would just go and go up and down through the uh, the, uh, the hollows and the, uh, the, the the convex portions or the bumps. Now what? I'll lower the Oh, just a blade. Yeah, these uh, these metal body planes, this specific one. Yes. Well, it doesn't take much to, uh, to flatten this. I'm not going to go through the whole process, but you get the idea. So this is uh, probably, if you're going to buy, invest in hand planes, uh, number, uh, number seven is probably uh, one of the planes you should get, along with the number four or four and a half smoother. And the block plane are both the standard angle and the low angle block plane, as I mentioned yesterday. Those are the three important planes, and there's a fourth one I need to think about.